Guess who's back? Off the shelves. What's going on guys? Well, it is that time again. You almost thought I forgot, didn't you? Nope, didn't forget. Just late to the party. Blu-ray haul time, off the shelves time, baby. So, for the past month and a week or so, I've gotten a good little collection of Blu-rays here. Some of these are March releases, but fuck it, who cares? This is what I've gotten up to the point of recording this. So, got some very interesting titles here. Some of them are ones I haven't seen, like every single month. Some of them are movies that I love. Some of them are movies I watched and didn't care for so much. Let's get into it. No order whatsoever. I just picked the pile up, stuck it right here, and we're just gonna go in random order, so. Usually I kind of categorize it 4Ks, new releases, eh, fuck all that. We're just going to go random. So, right off the bat, Valentine. This is a movie that I have not seen since it first came out back in 2001. So, long time. Uh, this movie's okay. <laughs> this is a stream it all day long. It's a decent slasher movie. It's got some decent kills, some somewhat interesting origins for their killer. The baby face look is okay. Um, the reveal of the killer, to me, is obvious. That brings it down quite a bit. The acting, the characters, like, you don't really give a shit if any of them live because you don't really like any of them but one, and she's the only one that survives, so it's decent. Worth your time if you're a slasher fan. Not really worth the $30 or whatever it takes to get to Scream Factory, although this cover is pretty badass, so not bad. Stream it. A horror classic, many would say. The Amityville Horror, the original. I didn't realize I didn't own this, but I had a Patreon request for it. Went to go get it off the shelves and said, oh shit, I only got the remake, which I'm a big fan of. Pop this in, and while I do need to rewatch it because I fell asleep for a good 10 or so minutes of it towards the third act, um, this is a movie that I think is dated quite a bit. I understand the classic appeal to it. There's definitely some creepy stuff in here, um, but there is some dated aspects to it as far as the way that some of the things unfold, the, the, the pig face thing and everything. So watching it in 2019 was a little bit like, hmm, okay. This is one of those movies where I do prefer the remake. I know people hate when I say that, but I would say stream it. One that I have not watched yet. I bought it because Holly really wanted to see it. Instant Family. I've heard it's really good. I've actually heard that it surprisingly has a lot of heart to it. On the surface of family comedy with Mark Wahlberg, it doesn't really have the greatest track record with those. So I have no opinion of this movie whatsoever. If you've seen it, let me know down in the video description below. Is it good? Is it bad? Did I waste my money? I don't know. Blind Spotting. Had a lot of people have this in their top 10 of the year list. And uh, it's a good movie. I really liked it. I would say... It's somewhere between stream it and go out and buy it. It's a go out and buy it level of filmmaking, but it's a stream it as far as this is a movie I'll probably only watch once. So I don't think it's necessarily something you need to add to your collection. It's a movie that is definitely diving into kind of race relations and especially with cop brutality and everything. And it does it probably the most tastefully of any of the movies that I've seen from last year that deal with those aspects. And it does it pretty powerfully. There's a whole like confrontation at the end between the main character and this cop that he saw murder a guy. So it's it's a very Friday style movie with kind of the buddy comedy type aspects to it. But it's got some very serious, very dramatic elements to it. So it's a pretty good movie. I would check this one out. One of my favorite movies of last year, Bohemian Rhapsody. Pretty cool little Best Buy steelbook here, the whole gold gold album thing. Um, I love this. I rewatched it last week. I still love it. I get to where some of the criticism is about it being kind of a safe, a little bit more sugar-coated version of the story, but even with that being the fact, it's still a damn good movie. Very enjoyable, very powerful with how they give the performance of Freddie Mercury. So glad that he won the Oscar. Soundtrack obviously is kick-ass. The whole Live Aid, as far as wrapping up the story, is kind of the crescendo, and also just the performance itself and the music. Awesome. So this is a go out and buy it all day long, people. If you saw my most recent uh, fan mail thing, you will know that these two, I got one from CP, Brain Scan, and I got one from John Kyle Stanton, Magic. Never seen either one of these. They both come highly recommended from not only the two guys that sent them to me, but also people who have commented on that video. So no re reviews for these whatsoever yet. Very looking forward to checking them out, though. Oh, this is a good one. California. Finally got the Shout Select release, so it's got the, you know, the two different covers or whatever. 
This is a damn good movie. If you've never seen it, it's Brad Pitt playing a serial killer. And you have David Duchovny and his girlfriend, they are going off and trying to make this novel about real life serial killers and they're going around to all the actual locations of murders and everything. And Juliette Lewis and Brad Pitt are like these trailer trash couple that kind of comes along the ride to go to California and they're just kind of stopping along this place with them. And unknowingly, they have a serial killer in the back seat the whole time. It's awesome. If you've never seen it, please do yourself a favor and pick up this Shout Factory release. Go out and buy it. Now! Here's one that hardly anybody talked about last year. And I didn't see it until after I made my top 10, or it might have snuck in there somewhere, at least in the horror one. The Clove Hitch Killer. This is a damn good serial killer story. To me, it's, this was right after I watched uh, House That Jack Built. This is a much better movie than that in any shape or form as far as my version of storytelling. You have Dylan McDermott who plays this very like ultra Christian, ultra like good dad that does bake sales and all that kind of stuff. And it's in this town where they had this clove hitch killer about 10 years ago who killed a bunch of women and then disappeared without a trace. And his son starts to find these little details that think or make them think that Dylan McDermott, his father, is actually the clove hitch killer. And that's all I'm going to tell you. The way that it kind of unfolds that mystery throughout the third act, the way that the movie ends. Brilliant! Love it. Go out and buy it. One of my favorite movies of last year, I think it was like number four, Creed 2. A very cool steelbook that's got Rocky and... Adonis Creed. He really does look like Gerald. I'm glad they moved the Creed logo there because it used to look like he had that giant hairdo from uh, Hey Arnold, but this is a go out and buy it all day long. This is a damn good sequel and a sequel that surprised the hell out of me with how good it is. Not quite as good as the first Creed, but it gives Creed a run for its money in quite a few ways. It makes Rocky IV an even better movie and I already love Rocky IV. Great fight sequences, great dramatic interaction between Rocky and Adonis Creed. Adonis Creed, a much more mature character, dealing with family issues, a newborn. The Dragos actually are characters you really care about in this. Awesome stuff. Cannot recommend this enough. Creed II, go out and buy it. This is one I don't know anything about. Holly picked it up for me because she said it was probably going to be up my alley. It was kind of like a, a gift for getting a promotion at work. I have yet to watch it. Hopefully one of you can tell me what it uh, is, if it's good or not. I haven't got a chance to check it out yet. Haunted Hospital, Heil Staten, I believe is how you pronounce it, but it looks like one of those haunted asylum type movies. Hopefully it's good. I've never heard of it before, so no opinions on it whatsoever. And this is the other one that she got, which I've heard of before, but I didn't really know what it was about. That's the old man and the gun. Uh, apparently Robert Redford's like a career criminal or something like that. I'm not sure. I haven't had a chance to check this one out either. So again, if you've seen this one, let me know down below. Is it good? Moving on to 4K upgrades, we've got Captain America the First Avenger. I just got done filming my MCU ranking. It's probably up before this video. So this is a damn good MCU movie. I love Captain America, so I can't wait to get Winter Soldier and Civil War on 4K, but this was a must buy. And I love the Steelbook. I love that artwork. So yeah, this is a go out and buy it. I love this movie. Definitely not the best. It's not going to be number one on my ranking, but um, a very good movie. One that I was waiting to go down in price before I bought because I was not very friendly to this movie in the review, but it was a movie that was decent enough to rewatch and I'm kind of a completionist. So Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom, the 4K steelbook, it was like 12 or 13 bucks or something like that. Best Buy, I was like, oh shit, I'll buy that. This is like 30 or 35 regularly. The movie's a stream it. You know, if not, a, it, it, I said, I think I said skip it in the review. I was just really angry when I did that review because there was a lot of things that really pissed me off about this movie. But once you get that initial experience out of the way, I think it'll be good enough for a stream it upon rewatch. Or who knows? Maybe I'll rewatch it and I'll hate it even more. And maybe I wasted my money. Who the fuck knows? Another 4K upgrade, The Little Mermaid. This is Holly's. No hate comments, please. Uh, <laughs> just kidding. Disney classics, gotta love it. But I, I, Little Mermaid is one of those movies I never really watched growing up. I was always more like Goofy Movie and Emperor Strike, or Emperor's New Groove, those style movies. This is Holly's favorite movie of all time. So this was for her as a 4K upgrade and just a little surprise. So there you go with that. Oh man, this one's complicated. Ralph Breaks the Internet 4K. <sighs> Not as good as the first record, Ralph. Not even close. There's a lot of decisions in this that frustrate me. Still an enjoyable animated movie. The animation's up there. The characters are there. It's still fun. It's a stream it for sure. But 
some of the ways that things kind of go with the character arc of Ralph, especially towards the third act of the movie, felt redundant and felt kind of distasteful to me. Um, I don't know. I, I, I love the first one so much that I, just, I expected way more from this one, but still good enough to buy. Here's one that I bought because people have always raved about this movie and I've never seen it and I still haven't seen it. So I don't have a rating for you, but Audition, Udashan, whatever the, the different translations are. I know the basic gist of the movie. I've seen it in a lot of countdowns. Um, and I'm looking forward to checking it out. That's all I can say. Here's one I've always heard named. It looked like it's probably gonna be a really stupid movie. I've seen pieces of it, never seen the whole thing. Chopping Mall. It was cl uh, very cheap. I've seen probably a third of this movie. I know it's robots let loose at a mall, just killing people. It's gonna be dumb fun or it's gonna be absolute garbage, but it was like seven bucks, so fuck it. The Exorcist 3, a movie I have not seen since I was a kid, but I always remember it being very creepy and a movie that's definitely worth checking out because I know the second one is like the worst sequel of all time for Exorcist fans, but the third one kind of feels like one of those underrated classics. So I'm looking forward to checking this one out again. Don't have a ranking for you, or a rating. Another one I haven't seen. Girl with the Spider's Web, uh, or Girl in the Spider's Web. I loved the David Fincher Girl in the Dragon Tattoo. This is not a sequel to that, but I love the character. I have yet to watch the, what is it, Dutch original movies, so I need to watch those eventually, but I was curious enough about this to check it out, so I haven't seen it yet. Overlord 4K, kind of a bland cover. That's the only negative with this. I wish it was something better, but um, this is a really cool movie. It made my top uh, five horror films of last year. It's like a really good war movie that kind of goes into a zombie territory. Very cool ride, go out and buy it. This is one that I had to pick up, not only because it was like this 80s classic that I just recently discovered, but also because of this VHS cover art, The Legend of Billie Jean. So it's actually just a regular old Blu-ray, but it's got this VHS cover art here. And I love the retro stuff about it, but this is a really cool 80s throwback movie. You got Christian Slater and um, Helen Slater, no relation apparently. Brother and sister, Christian Slater gets his uh, motorbike stolen by like the town bully. And when he gets back, he gets it back, it's all trash. So his sister Billie Jean goes to get the money back from that guy's dad. He tries to rape her, they end up shooting him and they go on the run as outlaws. And it's just a very cool, stylistic, fun movie that is just 80s as hell enjoyed the hell out of this. I just put it on randomly on a, a Amazon Instant Video one day, and I think I've watched it like three times since. The soundtrack and everything is great, so I had to own this. Go out and buy that one. A movie I have not seen, but I'm, I pretty much have gotten like my Stallone collection almost complete, so I had to get Daylight. I know the basic gist of it, but I've never seen it, so that's about all I have to say about this one. Is it good? Is it bad? Let me know down below. Andrew Becker is either going to be really mad or really happy about this one. The remake of Night of the Living Dead, the Tom Savini one. I have yet to be able to rewatch the original Night of the Living Dead, the black and white one. I know it's a classic. I got about halfway through it on a really late night and fell asleep. And for whatever reason, I've not had the desire to go back to it to check it out yet. Not that I even had a bad time with the first half. It's just one of those things. So this one, I feel like I'm going to end up liking more just because of the cast involved. It's modernized. It feels like it's going to be a lot gorier, possibly. But I always hear a lot of good things about this. I'm looking forward to checking this one out. These two I'll show you together. I really enjoyed these movies when I first saw them. How to Train Your Dragon 1 and 2. These are the 4K steelbooks from Best Buy. I have not had a chance to check out... Man, I got hiccups. I have not had a chance to check out the new one, The Hidden World. But these two movies are really good, heartfelt animated movies. Both of them are Go Out and Buy It. And this cover art, these are like gorgeous steelbooks. They don't even have like the, the title of the movie, it's just pictures. So I really had to pick these up. It was worth every dollar. So if you are a fan of animated films and you did not get a chance to check this out, I hear the third one makes it like one of the greatest trilogies of all time. So do you need more selling? Last two people. We'll start with this one. Stephen King's Thinner. This is directed by Tom Holland, who gave us Fright Night and Child's Play. This one's a little bit more B-movie than those two, but it's an enjoyable, goofy Stephen King movie. It's about a guy who's getting a blowjob, and he accidentally runs over this gypsy's daughter, and uh, the gypsy curses him and makes him lose weight rapidly, and to the point where he's like basically skin and bones. So it's about that and him enlisting the help of his 
he's a lawyer and he got this mob guy off, enlisting that mob guy to help him get revenge on this gypsy. So it's a pretty cool movie. It's definitely schlocky, but it's fun. So I liked it. It's somewhere between stream it and go out and buy it. it just depends on your taste in movies. If that sounds awesome to you, go out and buy it. If it sounds a little hokey, then check it out online. You might not like it, you might love it, who knows. Last, but definitely not least, is the 4K Steelbook for A Star Is Born. This was a movie that I still struggle with the fact that I left it off of my top 10. It was that or Avengers Infinity War, and it constantly went back and forth, and when I dropped my video, it was Infinity War at number 10. This was my honorable mention, but it's good enough to compete with that. So this is a damn good movie, damn good performances, damn good soundtrack, damn good storyline, a lot of drama, very heartfelt. It just hits you from every corner a movie should hit you from, and it's just really good. It's a movie that, on paper, I should have hated. I had no interest in this. Like the fourth remake of a story we've seen over and over again with Lady Gaga taking the lead. Who knows she could be a really good actress because she got an Oscar nomination for Christ's sake. And Bradley Cooper being a directorial debut is what made me give it a chance. And I'm glad that I did because this is a damn good movie. Go out and buy it all day long. Whew! That's it guys. That is my Blu-ray haul for this past month. And that is the close to this episode of off the shelves. So what Blu-rays did you get this month? Put them down below. Have you seen any of these titles that I haven't seen? Please let me know which ones to check out first and which ones to maybe stick on the shelves for a rainy day. No rush to get to them. Please let me know down below. Please like and share this video. Hit that subscribe button if you're not already a subscriber. If you guys want to check out some social media links, check the video description below for Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Spreadshirt for Cody Leach t-shirts and other merchandise, and my Patreon page, which is a great way to give back to this channel help this channel grow and get cool exclusive content for your eyes only, including the Blu-ray digital copy codes for all of this shit. I give those away to my patrons every single week that I buy movies that has those codes. So if you like that, subscribe to my Patreon page. You can support me and get some free movies. So check that out guys, please. And if you want to check out some more of my videos, including past Blu-ray hauls and off the shelves episodes, you can check that out by clicking right over here.